Hey everybody, welcome back to Entertaining the Thought. Uh, I just got out of um, the new Studio Ghibli film, uh, The Secret World of Arietti. Um, uh, actually, right before this, I, uh, I actually watched Ponyo again. And um, I don't know if this still stands, and by the time you're seeing this, the review's probably up already, but Doug Walker is actually reviewing Ponyo. Uh, as a nostalgia critic, so I kind of wanted to see that again, A, because I was going to see Arietti today, and also because I wanted to see it again before I watched the review. I don't know what he's going to be like, but um, just real quick thoughts. Uh, I like Ponyo. I think Ponyo's uh, a pretty good film. Uh, it's definitely a kid's film. It's not meant for families. It's meant for pretty much kids, but for what it was, I enjoyed it, so there's that. But anyway... Secret World Arietti. All right, so this is another Ghibli adaptation. Uh, Ponyo was Little Mermaid, and Howl's Moving Castle was obviously Howl's Moving Castle. So this one, uh, as you probably saw from the trailers, is an uh, adaptation of uh, Mary Norton's uh, The Borrowers. And um, from what I saw, I don't really know The Borrowers that well. I kind of know uh, there was that live-action film that came out in the late 90s, early 2000s, maybe, with John Goodman. And uh, that's really about as much as I know of The Borrowers. That's not saying a lot, I know. And uh, for the record, nobody gets covered in cheese sauce in this movie. But um, at least I don't think so. There could have been a time, but they didn't. But anyway, um, yeah, that's really much all I know about The Borrowers, but from what I saw, and from what I know of The Borrowers, um, this was probably Ghibli's almost most faithful adaptation. This, they didn't really, uh, take, uh, The Borrowers story and change it around a lot, like they did with, uh, The Little Mermaid, uh, for Ponyo, and I, I, once again, I don't know much about Hells, but, um, from what I read, and researched, uh, they did change a, uh, quite a bit from Hal's, at least I think. Once again, going off the of memory here, but um, yeah, this was Ghibli's most faithful adaptation because they hit like a lot of the same notes as the original Borrower story and, from my experience, the uh, the live action movie. So there was a lot of that. So there wasn't really much world creating in this story. So you didn't really get to see a lot of what Ghibli does best, which is um, creating new, exciting worlds. Uh, th this one was a world that was very familiar, uh, had a lot of the same <coughs> story beats, and you know, it was, it was, uh, it was an adaptation in uh, in a strict sense of the word, not usually loose like Ghibli likes to do. But, um, besides that, uh, general thoughts on the movie, uh, it's kind of, it's a little bit boring, which is a little depressing to say. It's kind of boring. Uh, the, pr uh, I think the problem with this was that it, it had such a set location. There are only about maybe five or six six locations in the entire movie, which makes sense, because it's a, no pun intended, small story, but it it really did feel like a much smaller movie than Ghibli's used to doing. Usually you go, like, you, you see, like, Spirit Away, and you see, like, you know, they're going to this giant bathhouse, and they go into the spirit world, and, like, there are all these fantastical creatures, and then you see, um, uh, then you see, like, uh, Ponyo, and, you know, you're going into the ocean, and, like, there's a bunch of, like, uh, Precambrian creatures and stuff like that. So that, I felt, was uh, a detriment to the movie, was that it was just such a small environment, such a small storytelling, really. And uh, I guess it, it fits in with the theme, but it... I, I, I was expecting, like, uh, them to take uh, a small world, like a house, and make it bigger and, you know, more expansive to, to compensate for, you know, these, these characters, because, you know, it would be big to these characters, but, um, yeah, it, it didn't really feel that, I didn't really feel the scope was, uh, was appropriate. Um, let's see, uh, obviously, since this was Disney, Disney distributed it, and this was the only way I could see it in my local theater, uh, obviously it was dubbed, and so, uh, really quick about Disney dubs. Um, I usually really like the Disney dubs. Um, 
the Disney dubs, I, I always feel like they're actually reinterpretations of uh, the written dialogue and not just, you know, pure just translation. And which, which, I, which I really like because it makes them feel more like, uh, I, I know this, this might sound bad, but it makes like, uh, the, God, what was that? Uh, Lapita, Castle in the Sky. That had a fantastic Disney dub. And it actually, the, the dub actually felt like an American film. And most people might look at that and be like, oh, God, why would they want to Americanize it? But it wasn't really Americanization. It was taking advantage of the English language and making it so that it looks like it was animated just for that audio track, which I found really good. So uh, the dub of Arietti, um, uh, let's see, I don't remember who played Arietti. It was Bridget something or other. Apparently she's a Disney Channel star. I'm not familiar with her. I don't watch the Disney Channel. But I, uh, I thought she did really, really well, actually. I thought, uh, she really nailed, I think she really nailed the performance. Um, she was, uh, believable. I thought, um, her emotions were great and all that junk. Uh, she, uh, she just, turned in a really good performance and that was uh, a good uh, that was a good surprise because I, I was a little worried but I was also worried about the dub of Ponyo and the dub of Ponyo a lot of people don't like it I really like the dub of Ponyo and so that was a really good surprise um what else uh Sean apparently this guy is another Disney Channel star and um this one di was not a pleasant surprise this guy was Dull. He was putting me to sleep. This, he, like, I did not care about this character at all. And like, he, he's, he, you're supposed to feel for him because, like, no spoilers, but like, <coughs> he has a, he has a kind of uh, big event that's happening to him, and it's a very, it's a very uh, life-altering, life-changing thing where you have to think about your life and such. And he just did not, he did not, um, he didn't. He didn't do it for me. I thought he was so dull. Um, I didn't feel any emotional connection to him. Uh, really, I didn't really feel the connection between him and Arietti either. And <clears throat> I, it, it, he didn't really. He needed to step up his game for this one, and uh, he didn't deliver because he had such a huge part. And it was, it was really sad to see that uh, Disney decided to use the um, the Disney Channel star, and uh, and not use a Disney Channel star that would do well in the role, just some guy. And he honestly was not very good. That was really disappointing. Um, Will Arnett and Amy Poehler were, were both pretty good. I really liked Will Arnett, even though he wasn't in it that much. Uh, Amy Poehler kind of got a little hammy. Um, she, w she was good, but, like, she kind of got a little hammy and, uh, fell into some of those tropes that, uh, Amy Poehler usually falls into. And I like Amy Poehler, but, you know, that was kind of disappointing, but... Uh, overall, I think she did pretty pretty well, and I, I I liked Will Arnett. Will Arnett was really good. He had he had a he was actually a really good match for the role. So um, Carol Burnett Carol Burnett uh, was was good. Um, it was a it was an okay dub. Um, uh, if 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 you're gonna watch this when it comes out on DVD, uh, the dub is gonna be fine. Uh, you could watch it in Japanese if you want. I'm sure they also did a good job. I haven't seen it in Japanese. Um, but, uh, the dub is serviceable, but nothing groundbreaking, and a little disappointing for a Disney dub, because, uh, Disney usually does really good dubs, and this was kind of disappointing. <coughs> Alright, uh, Studio Ghibli. Um, well, I'm sure I don't need to tell you, this is always true with Studio Ghibli. The movie's fucking gorgeous. Uh, animation is great, especially, uh, there's a scene where, um, Ariadne's running, and, uh, there are, like, a bunch of crickets, like, trying to, like, uh, like, grab what she, what she borrowed, and, uh, the, the animation was just great. Uh, I read, I think it was when Ponyo came out, that, uh, Miyazaki was going, in Studio Ghibli, he was going to, uh, completely cut the computer animation department. And I don't know how much truth that held. I know, 
I'm pretty sure anyway that Ponya was completely 100% hand drawn, and I don't really remember Tales of Earthsea. I think there was probably CGI in it. Don't remember because that movie wasn't very good, and um, you can see my review on the site. And uh, yeah, there was definitely there was not a lot of CG in it, but if he cut the CG department, I don't think he did because there was definitely some CG in here, and it was. It was good CG, too. It was a good blend of CG, but I think it was only about four or five, maybe six shots. So it was very minimal CG, but the, the art is gorgeous. Um, it's, 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 it's a beautiful film, but um, once again, it's hindered by the fact that... <coughs> sorry. It's hindered by the fact that the story is so small that you don't really get to see the epic scope. And... F like if they were to make uh, if they were to make this uh, a little bit more of an epic story, I would really like it. Uh, I, I think I think it would have been a, a lot more gorgeous and really cool to look at. But then you're seeing, but with this, you're seeing the same locations over and over again, same character designs. There's not that sense of wonder that you usually get in a lot of Ghibli films. So that was that was um, that was a little disappointing too. Um, yeah, no, not too heavy of an environmental message in this one, thank God, because uh, we know Miyazaki loves his environmental messages, but he didn't direct this one. I think this was a first-time director uh, of a woman, if I'm not mistaken, but um, I know Miyazaki wrote it, and uh, there were some Miyazaki-ish things in there, but um, overall, it was it was kind of a stereotypical film. Uh, there wasn't a lot to grab onto. Um, uh, Arietti is a great character. She was pretty much the driving force of the movie. Everyone else was kind of flat, boring, stock. Uh, <coughs> there was this one character that really just kind of comes out of nowhere and really is more of a MacGuffin than anything. And it, 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 he didn't really feel that necessary. And, I mean, I guess he was necessary in terms of plot, but they didn't really develop him, in, and uh, he's barely in it, so that was kind of that was kind of weird. But uh, other than that, uh, Arietti, it's it's okay. Secret World Arietti is uh, is a is a fine fine way to waste uh, about an hour and a half, but um, it's not it's not nearly as good as uh, other Ghibli outings, and um, yeah, it's. It's a very calculated, very... It, it's kind of like if... <coughs> it's kind of like if uh, Ghibli... If Ghibli was being ripped off by somebody, this is what they would release. And this, that's how I felt uh, with, uh, with Arietti. It was just... It, was, it wasn't a bad movie. It was just very flat. It was just kind of there. It, there wasn't a lot to grab onto. Um, people said this movie was slow. Uh, it get it does get slow near the ending, but I don't th I don't think it was that slow, and uh, it's 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 also pretty short. So um, I don't think you'll regret seeing this in the theater, especially if you're a Ghibli fan. But um, yeah, it's <clears throat> it's not really it doesn't really feel like a Ghibli film. It feels more like a just a regular anime film, kind of like a. Like, a lot of people loved Summer Wars. I wasn't that big of a fan of Summer Wars. This kind of feels like Summer Wars to me. So, um, yeah, if you could go check it out. Um, I'm not saying run out and see it. Uh, but... <coughs> sorry. Uh, but it's, it's, a, it's, it's pretty entertaining. Um, the dub is fine. Uh, the girl who plays Ariadne is really good, so, um, so that's a definite plus. And, of course, you're always going to get amazing animation with Ghibli. So, yeah, it was, uh, final thoughts. It was, it was serviceable, definitely not up to Ghibli standards, but probably better than Alvin Chipmunks, which I haven't seen, but we can, it's better than Cars 2. I'll give you that. It's better than Cars 2. Better Disney release than Cars 2. And uh, I know that's not saying much, but uh, with the state of children's films nowadays, you can pretty much say anything's acceptable and will be the best thing ever. Anyway, um, yeah, so if you want to go see Arietti, uh, 
you're not going to feel like you wasted money, but um, uh, my personal recommendation is wait for a rental because it's, I, I'm probably not going to be remembering this film uh, too long after I've seen it. So, yeah, that's, a, that's about it on Secret World Arietti. I'll check you guys later.